Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. My name is Nick Park and this is a series called The Biblical Game of Thrones. We're looking at the kings of Judah and Israel and one queen, Athalia, and we're seeing how, despite all the wickedness that we see there, despite the treachery, the politicking, even assassinations and murder and the betrayal, in the midst of it all, God is at work. And we saw in our last lesson about Jehoahaz, who was the son of a great king, Josiah, and yet Jehoahaz only reigned for three months and uh, ended up rotting in a prison in Egypt. And so another son of Josiah's came to the throne, and this was Eliakim. And he was installed on the throne as a puppet king by the pharaoh of Egypt, Necho, pharaoh of Egypt, in place of his brother Jehoahaz. And uh, he was given a new name. His name was Eliakim. God has established him. But the Egyptian king said now he's to be called Jehoiakim, which is not just God has established him, but Yahweh or Jehovah has established him, the very name of God. Now that might seem very strange. Why on earth would an Egyptian king want to give him a name that is not just about God in general, but is focusing on the very God of Israel? Well, remember, this was the same Egyptian king that God used to speak a word to Josiah, warning him not to come out in battle. And the scripture says it was the word of God speaking through this Egyptian king. You know, there's a backstory there that I wish, I, I'm just curious. Now, obviously, it's not in scripture. God didn't want to give us all those details. And I look forward to learning them in eternity. But there's obviously something going on with this Egyptian king that in some way, he was hearing the Lord, and in some way he was honoring the Lord, even as he was coming as an enemy against the people of Judah. Well, Jehoiakim was 25 years old and when he came to the throne, and he reigned for 11 years. But you've already guessed it, he continued to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, the Egyptian-Assyrian alliance that basically had come together and it was when the Assyrians and the Egyptians were coming together to fight the Babylonians that Josiah had attacked the uh, the Egyptians. Well, that alliance between the Assyrians and the Egyptians was actually defeated by the Babylonians. And now the Babylonians came and began to invade Jerusalem and very quickly displaced the Egyptians. Now, they didn't destroy the city of Jerusalem yet. They didn't destroy the temple yet, but they did take captives away with them to Babylon. And by the way, that was the, uh, the group of captives taken away that included Daniel and that included Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were not taken away as captives during the final downfall of Jerusalem when the temple was destroyed and, and all of that. But this was a few years earlier on this first partial uh, carrying away of people into captivity by the Babylonians. And they took away Jehoiakim as well. And, and they took vessels from the temple. They didn't destroy the temple, but they took many of the, the, the wonderful vessels of silver and gold and took them back to Babylon as well. And, and, and yet Jehoiakim was brought back from Babylon and he came back to Jerusalem and reigned for a while longer. I don't, I don't know what that was all about. Maybe the Babylonians looked at him and they looked at the other sons of Josiah and they thought, you know what, this one's no good, but he's better than the other guys. And so they brought him back again. And uh, he was there, served now, he'd, he had been installed as a puppet king by the Egyptians. And now he was a puppet king for the Babylonians as well. Now, Jeremiah prophesied against him. And Jeremiah prophesied that he would be killed and that he would have the burial of a donkey. And, and uh, the King Eliakim, or Jehoiakim, as he was also known, was not very happy about this, obviously. And there's this wonderful picturesque uh, incident in the book of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah had written down the words of the prophecy, and his scribe Baruch took it and read that to King Eliakim. And King Eliakim was in his summer house, but it was cold, so he had a fire burning there. And as the words of the prophecy were read out to him, after each page was read, the king would throw the page and burn it in the fire. You know, there's been so many people have tried to destroy and discredit the word of God because they didn't like what it said. Eliakim did it in a very open way because he was an open sinner, to be honest. Many people do it in a more hypocritical way. 
And yet it's not uncommon for people to try to discredit, devalue, or even destroy altogether the word of God because they don't like what it says about them. Of course, here's the truth. The truth is that if you don't like what the word of God says about you, the issue is not a problem with the word of God. The issue is a problem with you. It's not the word of God that needs to change. It's us that needs to change. We don't change the word of God to suit our prejudices or beliefs. We change ourselves to align with God's holy word. Well, the words of Jeremiah's prophecy were might have been burned in the fire, but they were fulfilled. Jehoiakim, he rebelled against Babylon. The Babylonians came and he was defeated. He was killed and his body was thrown over the wall and eventually buried in the ground with no more dignity than you would have given to a donkey. God's word will always come to pass. Let's make sure that we accept his word and apply his word and not try to fight against his word. Thank you for joining us and uh, join us again tomorrow for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drahada.